Hi, Michael Ye with the Georgia Poison Center, back again with another Cox tidbit. You might see a lot of these yellow flowers in bloom around this time in early March. This is Gelsimium sempervirens, commonly known as Carolina jessamine, yellow jessamine, or yellow jasmine. It is native to the southeastern states from Virginia to Florida, and its range stretches west to Texas and south to Central America. This is a popular ornamental plant that a lot of people have in their home gardens. At the Georgia Poison Center, we occasionally get calls about young children who taste or eat these flowers, thinking that they're honeysuckle. But this is also a poisonous plant that can make people very sick. So whenever we hear about people eating this, we actually get a bit concerned. Before we dive deeper into Carolina jessamine toxicity, let's talk a little bit about honeysuckle. Not all honeysuckle species are edible. This plant with the showy red flowers is a native plant called coral honeysuckle, Lonicera sempervirens. It has been used as a medicinal herb by Native American tribes, but it is not generally considered edible. The most common honeysuckle that we think of in this area is probably Lonicera japonica. It is a vine from Asia that can be quite invasive. Common names include Japanese honeysuckle, Chinese honeysuckle, or gold and silver flower. This latter name comes from its Chinese name, Jininhua, which literally means gold silver flower. That's because you'll find both gold and yellow flowers blooming on the same plant simultaneously. It is used in traditional Chinese medicine, and some people also steep the fresh or dried flowers in boiling water to make a refreshing herbal tea. For those who are into mixology, you can also make a simple syrup to create some floral scented cocktails. There's also a way to grab onto the petals with one hand, pinch off the calyx with your other fingers, and pull out the stamen to reveal a tiny drop of sweet nectar that you can taste. A lot of people spent their summers growing up with this sweet treat, so it's not surprising that kids might be tempted to taste them. Now, you might think honeysuckles look nothing like these Carolina jessamine flowers. But remember, these are little kids that we're talking about who are curious and likely to explore by putting things in their mouths. So why do we get nervous when we hear about kids getting into these flowers? The answer is these plants contain a substance called gelsamine. Gelsamine is a chemical that binds to glycine receptors in our nerve cells. Glycine is an amino acid that acts as an inhibitory neurotransmitter that slows down the activity of motor neurons. So in other words, motor neurons are the nerve cells that control our muscle movements. Glycine acts as the brakes, so to speak, to keep these nerves from firing out of control and causing uncontrolled muscle movements and seizures. The chemical found in these plants, gelsamine, acts as a glycine receptor agonist. So it's almost like you have too much glycine acting on your nerve cells. If a person ingests enough gelsamine, they can lose muscle control, experience paralysis, and even stop breathing. People can have decreased sensitivity to pain while feeling kind of mellow and relaxed. One of the most interesting facts about the substance is not necessarily its mechanism of action, but how these adverse effects were first discovered. On September 20, 1879, the British Medical Journal published a letter titled Gelsiminum as a Poison. Well, the British called it gelsiminum instead of gelsimium, like the way they say aluminum instead of aluminum. The author of this paper was a 19-year-old medical student at the University of Edinburgh named Arthur Conan Doyle. Yes, this was the young Sir Arthur Conan Doyle who would go on to write the famous detective stories of Sherlock Holmes. Now, in those days, medical research sometimes involved just taking an unfamiliar substance and recording how you felt afterwards. At that time, yellow jasmine was used to treat breathing problems such as asthma, croup, and whooping cough, as well as pain and anxiety. So Doyle took a tincture of gelsimium every day at the same time and kept the journal. He started by taking 40, then 60 minims of his tincture, but didn't feel much. Just for reference, a minim is a drop, about 0.06 milliliters of liquid. He kept pushing the envelope and gradually took more and more of this stuff. And when he got to 90 drops, that's when he really felt the symptoms. 20 minutes after taking that dose, he wrote, quote, on rising from my chair, I became seized with an extreme giddiness and weakness of the limbs, which, however, quickly passed off. Well, that piqued his curiosity, so he decided to take more, this time 120 drops. 
The giddiness was less prominent, but a few hours later, he began having trouble with his vision. At 150 drops, he got a headache and diarrhea. Now, many people might have stopped taking it at this point, but he decided to go big or go home. So he took 200 drops, or approximately 10 milliliters. This dose gave him severe diarrhea, a headache, and a weak pulse that left him quite incapacitated. He ultimately concluded that healthy adults may take up to 90 drops, but doses of 90 to 120 drops induces a mild paralysis, while even higher doses yield more unpleasant effects. He also concluded that, quote, the system may learn to tolerate gelsiminum as it may opium, if it be gradually inured to it. I feel convinced that I could have taken as much as half an ounce of the tincture had it not been for the extreme diarrhea it brought on. So how bold was that? He had previously reported a case where someone died after taking 75 drops, but he still felt he could have taken more than 200 drops if he had not been pooping all over himself so badly. Anyway, this offers us a glimpse into the age-old tradition of self-experimentation in medical research. As Arthur Conan Doyle eventually became a full-time writer, his work continued to show the influence of his medical training, with many other drugs and chemical poisons appearing in his detective stories. Another literary connection with this plant involves Agatha Christie, another famous author of detective novels. She wrote a short story called The Yellow Jasmine Mystery. It was published in a British weekly journal called The Sketch in February 1924. In this story, the detective Poirot investigates the case of a man who was murdered by his physician, Dr. Quentin, who gave him an injection of yellow jasmine. Agatha Christie later incorporated this story into her novel, The Big Four, that came out three years later in 1927. There is also a closely related plant in the same genus but different species in Asia called Gelsimium elegans. It is used in traditional Chinese medicine, but it is also known to be very toxic. Not only does it contain gelsamine, but it has other poisonous chemicals such as gelsenicine and cumine. Therefore, it is only used topically, that is, only applied externally to the skin. In Chinese, its common names include duan chang chao, meaning heartbreak grass, or gou wen, meaning lethal kiss. It is used to treat pain, muscle spasticity, and skin problems like eczema, ulcers, fungal infections, hemorrhoids, and even leprosy. There have been many cases of both accidental and intentional poisoning with this plant in China and Southeast Asia. Researchers in Hong Kong reviewed poisoning cases from 2005 to 2017. They showed that the most common reason for Gelsimium elegans ingestion was because it got mixed in with other medicinal herbs. Sometimes people misidentified it while foraging on their own, and in some cases, herbs bought in a market were contaminated. Patients typically reported feeling dizzy, then muscle weakness, difficulty breathing, and coma. In Chinese medicine, there is a tradition of making medicinal wines or liquors by steeping herbs in various alcoholic beverages. In 2016, 15 workers at a eucalyptus plantation in the southeastern Guangdong province consumed a homemade medicinal liquor mistakenly made with this heartbreak grass. Three people died, and 12 of them were hospitalized. Another report published in 2021 also involved a 41-year-old man who died after drinking a medicinal herbal liquor. There are many more cases of accidental ingestions as well as homicidal poisonings reported in Chinese language journals. One of the most high-profile homicides occurred on December 23, 2011. A Chinese billionaire logging tycoon, a guy who owned a forestry products company named Long Li Yuan, was allegedly poisoned by a business associate. This person was said to have slipped gelsimium elegans into a hot pot of stewed cat meat. Three people ate this dish, including the suspect, although the other two people ate a lot less and survived the poisoning. Another case that grabbed international headlines in which gelsamine poisoning was suspected involved a man named Alexander Piripichny. He was a Russian businessman and whistleblower in exile in Britain who collapsed and died suddenly while jogging in 2012. 
he was thought to be a target for assassination because he handed over some documents to Swiss prosecutors describing a $230 million money laundering scheme involving senior Russian officials and the Russian state treasury. One of his life insurance companies ordered forensic testing that suggested the presence of an unknown chemical with the same atomic mass as gelsinium. But after further testing and investigation, the coroner concluded that there was no evidence of foul play. However, since poisoning cannot be definitively ruled out, this case continues to spark a lot of interest and speculation. So coming back to the local cases where little kids accidentally taste the flower or two, how bad can it be? Toxicologists from our neighboring state of North Carolina tried to answer this question. They reviewed 92 cases called into the North Carolina Poison Center between the years 2000 and 2022. They presented their findings at the North American College of Clinical Toxicology Conference last year in September 2022. Most of the cases they had involved children with an average age of 6.6 .6 years. Most cases were managed outside a healthcare facility. Symptoms that were reported included dizziness, headache, blurred vision, vomiting, and abdominal pain. The good news was 82% of the patients had no effect while 14% had minor effects, 3% had moderate effects, and only 1% had major effects. Therefore, it seems like clinically significant toxicity in children appears to be rare. Despite these reassuring findings, we always take any potential toxic exposures very seriously. If you or someone you know may have ingested a poisonous plant, call the Poison Center hotline at 1-800-222-1222 to speak with a certified specialist in poison information. This service is available free of charge 24 hours a day. So next time when you see these gorgeous yellow flowers in the spring, just admire them, but don't taste them. Well, that's our show for today. Stay curious, enjoy the wonders of mother nature and be well.